So people punch here. So I want to show you this game called Mark Out. When you first start off, you're going to have to make a deck. So you got to go to the deck builder or open up some packs and then make your deck. There are 35 total cards you can have per deck. Each individual card will be able to be upgraded from copper to silver to gold. Gold is the highest amount of damage or highest amount of anything really for that card. There are about 100 some odd cards plus. I'm not sure how much how many there are in total. But this game was also created by a single person. Uh, Shannon Williams, I think it was. And for what it's worth, $17, there's quite a bit in here. Besides making your deck and upgrading your cards, you can also mess with your wrestler. Whether it be giving him tattoos, changing his nipple placement, giving him weird hairstyles, some weird lipstick or booties, and having him go outside and look weird. You could do that too. You could also get loaded, customized wrestlers from the workshop, which I had seen that this game does have. I think the same thing can be done for the cards that you can make. But there are three different types of modes in this game. There are Exhibition, Grind, and PvP. PvP, there are no players playing right now, and I don't know what the online is like. But Exhibition is Standard, Submission, and Cage. Different types of rings with different maps. And then you have grind, which is basically just like circuits or doing challengers and having like uh, events and so on happen. But this is the actual main game. My understanding of this is that it's a patient card game. Meaning that if you be aggressive, you use up all your um, action points, you're going to lose a lot. So there are... You're, Cards, for example, that you could use, like Power Bomb or Fake Knee, and right next to them will have your energy or action cost. In this game, you can reverse somebody that decides to attack you, meaning you could stop them from attacking and not take damage. However, the only time that will actually work is if you have the amount of energy to use on that card. For example... If they use a 5 energy cost card and you have 3 energy, you cannot stop it. But if you have 3 energy and they have a 3 energy cost card, then you can reversal it and stop it. When they use that card, the action points will be given to you every single turn. So when you end the turn, you'll get an action point. If you wait, the action points will never really go away unless it's used. So you could save up to like... 10 or 12 because each turn it, your action points will also uh, in total go up so instead of just a standard of three it'll go three four five six seven all the way up until the game's over so when you're trying to wrestle somebody like the npcs or players really it's just a matter of having their action points be lower than yours because you're able to do reversals easier you're able to do your own cards easier and even stack up the amount of moves on a person if you have more action points than they do. Granted, it might be difficult if it was PvP, but that really depends upon the cards and how they work. And you could do weird combos like I was doing a uh, vertical suplex with a modifier that would in turn be able to become the superplex that would do more damage. Like I said, for 17 bucks. It does have a lot going for it. It was made by a single person. So, do I recommend it? Yes. And this is coming from somebody who played Fights in Tight Spaces for almost 100 hours. The game isn't a roguelike. The game isn't super polished. And the game isn't, of course, fully released. It's in early access. There are some stuff with it. But it's under 20 bucks, And it is a wrestling card game. So why not? If you want to go ahead and give it a try, it's on Steam, like I said, for under 20. Made by a single developer. If you want to go ahead and help them out, they got a Discord and stuff on their Steam page. And, uh, yeah. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.